Hey everybody, this is Ben. And this is Will. And you're listening to a screencast of the Zipline Show today. You might even be watching it if you're really talented. I think you should be watching it, to be honest. I would hope. But yes, so this is kind of our first full-on screencast, I guess you could say. We've been uh, doing the podcast thing that's wrapping up and, you know, decided to start doing screencasts and here we go. And we actually decided that for our first screencast, we're going to do something fairly advanced. And by fairly advanced, I would actually label it as really very advanced, not just fairly advanced. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we don't bore too many people and the people that have just kind of been going along like, uh, guys, you should do something advanced. Well, this is for you. Yeah. So this is like chapter 35 of the Lutz book. If anyone went out and got Learning Python by Mark Lutz, which is the O'Reilly book that I learned Python off of. So yeah, advanced. But today we're going to be talking about descriptors. And descriptors are these magical things in Python that got added uh, in Python 2.2. They are the new style classes, which is why we are extending from object here, like you can see right there. And uh, you have to do that in Python 2.7 uh, or, or 2.2 to 2.7. And uh, you don't have to do that in Python 3.0. Um, since I'm using Python 2.7, we'll extend from object. But what descriptors are, are they are classes that allow you to do managed properties uh, on another class. And specifically, they implement a interface for get, set, and delete. And that makes them very interesting uh, for a lot of reasons, um, including uh, probably most uniquely is uh, class decorators and property decorators uh, that perhaps we've seen in Python before or perhaps we'll show you in another screencast. But we're going to show you specifically how to create descriptors uh, in the new Pythonic way today. And by we, of course, Ben means him. This is, uh, this is Ben's screen. He's doing all the typing. I will attempt to provide commentary where appropriate, but quite honestly, Ben knows a lot more about this than I do, uh, especially since he kind of solved some interesting problems with descriptors at work just the other day. So he's all on his game with this. Okay, so the one thing that you should probably notice with descriptors is that you can set, the, the main interface is this get, set, and delete. And if you know anything about managed attributes, it's that you usually have a function like a getter or a setter and a deleter in order to do something dynamic when you're accessing properties on an object or a class. So Python automatically passes in some extra stuff for you uh, when they're going to be calling the get, the set, and the delete method. And that extra stuff is, uh, in terms of the get method, it's the self which is the instance of the descriptor, instance, which is the instance of the class that holds the descriptor's attribute, and the owner, which is the type or the class that that instance is part of. And then for set and delete, uh, the only extra thing that they pass is that instance variable so that you can have access to the instance. So why would you use descriptors? That's a very good question, and I was actually thinking about the answer to that one. So descriptors provide you with a very powerful and, more importantly, logically ordered way to handle inputs. The, the classic way of doing something like this would be to just have some sort of value within your class that you would set. Like, so if I had a people class, I might have like a height variable stored in that class. So like I could do something like people.height is equal to 6. And, you know, that would be a six inch tall person. But what if you want to do some sort of validation on the information you're getting in? What happens if you only want to allow numbers to be stored in that variable? Or even if you want to be more specific, what happens if you only want to allow uh, properly formatted email addresses in that particular variable? Descriptors give you the ability to do that by kind of adding a layer of abstraction between the actual bit of code where you would be messing around with stuff in a class and the, where it's actually stored. So like Ben is writing up our, our get and set and delete methods here and this actually allows him to put in 
you know, powerful validation tools. In the set, he could say, only allow numbers. And then, hey, that's I'm going to be taken care of by the very nature of this descriptor class that we've created. So here is the simplest kind of descriptor. When we want to set a value, then we just set a local variable into ourself. This is known as caching. So we set the local variable in the descriptor object, which can also maintain state. And then if we want to get it, we just return it. And this if instance is none raise attribute error, uh, that basically says if the class is trying to access this value, then we won't allow it. We'll say that only instances can uh, raise the value. So the basic interface is this. If you have a class thing, you can set a descriptor property like this. Uh, name is equal to descriptor. And then when you do self.name is equal to name in the init, then actually this calls the setter function. So everything is going to go through this descriptor now that we've instantiated this, this name. Uh, with a descriptor like that. So when you set it like we're doing in the init definition, uh, then it goes through the set and it does the self.val equals value. When you do the get, it retrieves that uh, descriptor self.val. And if you do a delete, it's actually going to delete it from the descriptor class. It's not going to delete the descriptor itself. Uh, so this is one way that we could say create read only properties, uh, which are called data descriptors. Uh, we could just ignore sets, just take this out here and just be like, eh, I'm going to raise an error for you. Well, Ben's typing. I'm going to inject a little bit of neatness with this. Because Python is amazing, it kind of knows what you're trying to do. So like in Beg's example here, when we do the init, we don't need to do an explicit call to get. Python just knows that if you're attempting to put some sort of value in your descriptor to call that particular method. Might not be super obvious to people that that's what's happening, so I just want to clarify that. Same with the get. If you were to reference it as a like people dot height, then it would automatically call this get method and spit out whatever sort of properly formatted information your descriptor class wants to be providing. So Python is taking care of all of that. So don't get too confused if you don't see any specific calls to a get set or delete. Right. But I can prove right now that those calls do happen. And so here I'm going to run the little Python program that we've done here. And you can see that I instantiate a a thing called Bob, but when I try to set it in the init function right here, it says no setting. So that's one example of making a read-only attribute. And then now I'll go back to the original. Now we have a descriptor where when we call the getter, you can see that it prints getting because I put that in the getter function right there. So everything is going in and out of this descriptor class, even though we're accessing it from the thing object, if that makes sense. Now, here is the problem with descriptors, uh, especially when we do things in this way. Um, and that's that things are stored in the descriptor at the class level. And so if we change things uh, in one instance, it's going to change things for the entire class. This is kind of nasty, but could also be desirable in some situations. I could see situations where you would want to have a particular piece of information shared among all instances of a particular class, in which case the descriptor kind of does that automatically. But that's not always what we want. Kind of going back to the people and height thing, right now, people.height, if we were to modify that, it would be changed for every single instance of the people class. And not everybody is six inches tall, so we don't want that. Right. So what we're going to do, the simplest way to solve this problem is to store some name in the instance that uh, we can save the property there, uh, but when the original attribute is called, it still goes through our getter and setter. So that's the simplest way, and that was kind of my solution to it. Um, there are other proposed solutions, like you could store a dictionary in the descriptor with instances and then return the correct instance value. Uh, when you get it. But for the purposes of, of this screencast, I think this would be the easiest way. So basically in the init function, 
we're going to look for a name and uh, we're going to set our name to that name. Now, I'm going to do something special, a bit special here, and I'm actually going to call this self.mangle name. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is, if you know anything about name mangling in Python, name mangling is when you add the two underscores before the name. Python does something special with that. It puts the class name, it attaches the class name to the name mangled name, uh, thereby sort of kind of hiding it from outside access. So since name mangling is special in Python, people usually recognize that names with two underscores are internal to the class and that they're not to be accessed from outside. So we're going to add our own little bit of name mangling to this and we're going to do that with this mangle method that I'm going to write right now. Which I probably should should have been writing that the entire time I was talking. <laughs> Look at him go, folks. Isn't he all impressive with his Python powers? hi -ya! Thanks, Will. Just kind of throwing back to something Ben sort of mentioned at the beginning is that um, what the, the other option to solve this problem is to keep a dictionary. This is a little bit nasty because dictionaries only allow certain things for keys. Uh, specifically, it only allows immutable objects. So if you wanted... If in some situation the 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 key that would be used in that dictionary were to be a mutable object, it would just face plant because that's not allowed in Python. So it it's not a universal solution using a dictionary. It will work in a lot of cases, but not all of them. So you know, pros and cons kind of determine kind of whatever works best for your project. For what we're doing, we definitely do not want to be using that. And this is simpler. It's a lot easier to understand. Heck, I can basically understand this. And that's saying something about the ease of understanding. <laughs> okay, so this name mangling basically appends two underscores. Uh, if we give it a name that already starts with two underscores, then we say, oops, there's going to be a conflict. We can't do this. If it starts with one underscore, then we just add one more underscore to it. And if it doesn't start with any underscores, then we add the two underscores to make it name mangled. That's about the, uh, the long and short of it. So now, what we're going to do is when we're going to do our getter, we're actually going to uh, return the self.name that's on the instances dictionary, right? So we're going to do a quick check so we don't raise an error by accident. We're going to raise our own error. This is, you could do this with this if statement, you could do it with a try except block. I just chose to use the if statement. And if it is in there, then we're going to return instance.dict uh, self.name. So this special property, uh, underscore, underscore, dict, underscore, underscore, is on every Python object that exists. And basically, it holds all the names. Uh, of attributes and methods that are stored within that object. So right now we're just setting an attribute on that object with self.name. So that's our name mangled object that's going to access it. Now I'll show you that when we use the dir statement, but when you use dir, the dir function, then it'll actually print out the instance.dict. And you can print it out directly. You can access it directly if you want some to iterate over the attributes that are in an object. And in fact, I'm going to do that right now uh, in the setter. So first we check if self.name is none, which is the common case, right? Because name.none is name equals none is the default. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set the name equal to the name of the attribute that we set in the class. So if you see down here, I said name is equal to descriptor. Right? Well, I really like this name, the one I saved, this mangled. I'd really like it to be double underscore name. I don't want to have to pass another name here like this. You know, that would be too awkward. So instead of doing that, I'm going to use, if this name is none, I'm going to use a uh, special uh, fetch adder method that I'm about to write. And I'm going to pass it the instance because I want to store things on the instance rather than on the class. So let's go down here. And I'm going to iterate over 
that dictionary again. But not just of the instance, I'm going to do it over the entire class. Uh, class is another special name that's reserved in uh, Python objects. So basically this says for every attribute, which is a keyword because this is a dictionary, so it's for every name that's in the thing, uh, we're going to check it. So now if the adder starts with the double underscores, then we know that this is either one of our names that we've already set or it's one of the special class, dict, name, module, or some extended, you know, equals, in, contains, something like that. So we, we want to ignore those. So we'll just continue looping through uh, these at attributes uh, if the name starts with a double underscore. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and fetch that object using the uh, dictionary get item uh, method. Sorry, I'm typing and talking at the same time. It's tough. So you might recognize that. That's dictionary ask us right there. I'm just taking the key, the key, which is adder, and then I'm getting the object that's associated with that. And then we're going to do a little test. If object is equal to self, meaning if this object is the type of the descriptor that I'm looking for, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my name as equal to the mangled adder name. So this basically finds the name that we set using the descriptor property, mangles it, and then stores it back into uh, the class again. And then we're going to break out of the loop because we already found it and we don't need to carry, carry on anymore. So that's how we're going to set our name and that's how we're going to do our ma name mangling. If you don't really get it, inspect the code a little bit, watch how it runs, and, and you should see that it's going to run pretty well. And now, rather than setting a value on our descriptor, a class level va variable that's going to be changed by all the instances, we're actually going to set the, the variable right onto the instances dictionary, like so, in the same way that we got it. And now when we delete things, we're not going to delete our own self.val. We're actually going to delete it right off of the instance. Now, there's several ways that you could do this. So if you want to comment about how you would do this using get adder, set adder, things like that, uh, please feel free. And we'd love to hear it. But I'm just doing this to make it explicit what I'm actually doing and uh, using that instance dictionary, that object dictionary to do it. And I just want to show you what's going to happen here. So I'm going to do t is equal to thing name Bob, and then I'm going to, oops, descriptors that thing. And when I do this dir t, you're actually going to see a couple things here. You're going to see the name attribute right there, and look what happens when I. Does it work? Yeah, t dot name is there. Okay, and then when I do the t.dict, you can see that there's this mangled name there, t. Uh, underscore underscore name. So we've basically stored this secret variable inside of t, where we can still get it and set it through the regular name variable, but there's that secret variable where we're scoring it on the instance. So if we do s equals descriptor dot thing Alice. If I could spell things, that would be helpful. Descriptors. Now we do s.name Alice and t.name is Bob, and they're not overwriting each other. Yay. And victory has been achieved. So, why is this useful? Aside from solving the initial problem where we overwrite things on the entire class instead of just instances? Yeah, because we could have just set this to a regular old name property. We don't have to go through these getters and setters and deleters and do this crazy fetch adder and name mangling and all this sort of stuff. Why is this important? Well, let's talk about validation. So Python doesn't really care about types and mutability or immutability, you could make that name anything you wanted to be. You could do name is equal to one. And uh, Python would be perfectly happy for that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create some validation in the class so that we can say make sure things are an email or make sure things are a phone number or make sure things are an IP address uh, so that all of our data is being passed correctly to each other. So let's do a regular expression invalidator. Regular expressions are this insane, awesome, really difficult, yet really easy thing in computer science that is just, it's like magic for string matching and parsing. A regular expression is basically kind of a chunk of, I guess I would go so far as to call it code, that allows you to describe various string formattings. So like an email address, it's every single email address follows the same form. It is some number of letters and numbers, an at symbol, some combination of letters and numbers, a dot, and then three more letters, a dot com, a dot org. Uh, I suppose there is also dot like CA for two letter top mm -hmm. level domain names, but all email addresses basically follow some form, some general form. A regular expression allows us to describe this in general. We can actually put together a regular expression that says, okay, I'm looking for some number of letters and numbers, whatever, an ad symbol, some more number of letters and numbers, whatever, a dot, and then something after that. And by just making this one small string, this regular expression, we can do very, very powerful generic string comparisons to find and make sure that stuff fits. You can do this with anything that has format to it. Zip codes, telephone numbers, email addresses. Uh, you can even go so far as to use this to parse out data in like comma separated value documents. It's just, it's super, super powerful. You just have to write this one little regular expression and then you can just check a string against it. And it's very fast, very efficient, and it's the dark magic. So I've actually just very quickly, while we was talking about that, I just wrote a regular expression validator that is a descriptor. Ben, is that good? So this is what I did. I gave it this regex value, which is a class level variable. That's the regular expression we're going to match on. Then in the init, I'm going to pass it a regular expression and the name, because remember, we need the name up here on line nine. And then I am going to compile that regular expression using the re module in Python, which you should really look into if you're interested in regular expressions, um, if this thing is a string. Otherwise, if it's none or an object, I'm going to just set that regex to that none or object. And then I'm going to call super, which is the new style way of, of calling your, your parent class's methods. And I'm going to call it with the init name equals name to ensure that we get the name mangling happening in the init function. Now, with validation, we only really care when someone sets a value. We don't really, if they get, getting the value is not important because we presume if they were able to set it okay, then it's going to come out okay. And we don't really care about deletion because deletion is the same as the superclass. So remember, when you're extending classes in Python, everything that you override will be overridden unless you call the super method, but then all attributes and all methods that were in the superclass still exist in the child class. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the regex is none. And if it is none, we're going to say, hey, programmer, you need to implement that. So you need to put a regular expression here for us to match against. And if the regular expression matches whatever we're trying to set into it, meaning that we found something so it's not none, then we're going to call our super um, method to set it with the fetch adder and the name mangling and all that stuff. So we're going to call super to set the value if it matches. And if it doesn't match, we're going to say, oh, hey, that's not valid. So now we're going to change this thing to a person because it's not a thing anymore. And it's going to have a name. And it's going to have an email address. And the email is going to be the regex validator with this super regular expression that hopefully will validate an email. Do not look. It might burn your eyes. Ah! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that should be the at symbol. Sorry. Words at thing dot com. There's only three of those. If you've never done regular expressions before, this probably looks super, super confusing. And quite honestly, it is. Regular expressions are pretty hard to do. It takes a decent amount of practice to really have any mastery of them. So... Don't be afraid of regular expressions. 
just know that that it's not something you're going to pick up super quickly. It takes a little time to get used to them. And quite honestly, this is a relatively easy regular expression. The complex ones are just psychotic looking. Yeah. And we're doing this all on the fly. I have no idea if I'm coding this right or not. So if we mess up and I have to debug, I'm sorry. Anyway, now we're going to test it. We're going to see if this bob at example.com makes it through the regular expression generator. And we're also going to see if we can make Alice not make it through the regular expression generator. So I'm going to give her an, uh, a web address. Let's say ziplineshow.com. That is not an email address. So that should fail, hopefully. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens when we run that. Cross your fingers. Excellent. The first one, Bob validates, and we set Bob equal to Bob at example.com. However, when we try to do it to Alice, you notice that uh, we get the zipline show is not valid. So we don't set the zipline show, and in fact, we don't even create this person. Alice doesn't exist because we couldn't validate that email expression. And in fact, just to prove that this is true, if we try to change Bob's email to something that's not real, equal to one, uh, then we're gonna get that same error, although a little bit more verbosely. Uh, no, it's bad, etc. So that has been a quick little tutorial, or not so quick, depending on your perspective, on creating regular expression validators using descriptors in Python. And let's just be really explicit about why this is important and not just something you could do with a single class with a bunch of methods in it. Notice how Ben, when he just did bob.email is equal to one, normally, without descriptors, that would be fine. Python wouldn't care. With descriptors in place, it forces the validation, even if you have the appearance of direct access to a variable within that instance of the class. And that's important. If you're going to a database, if you're getting data from different sources and you don't know what's coming at you, this could be a good way to stop errors before they happen. And, I mean, it's really nice because then you don't need to be constantly remembering to call some check email method every time you want to mess around with an email address. Exactly. You just say, this is an email. Um, if you were really smooth, what you would do is you would do email validator, and you would just subclass regex validator, and you would set this, instead of setting it to none, you would set it to this thing. So, that's it. I hope you learned something, and I hope it wasn't too complicated, but yeah, it's probably the most advanced topic we've done so far. And it'll only get worse from here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be going back and forth between easy and hard stuff. So with that, uh, you can follow the show at, at the Zipline Show, follow Will at, at Will2041, and you can follow me at, at BBankfort. Also, the ZiplineShow.com, central hub of all things Zipliney. And uh, check out our awesome videos on YouTube.com slash Zipline Show. And also, Facebook, gotta do the Facebook, Facebook.com slash the Zipline Show, and that is it. Yep, source code will be on this post. <laughs>